So far, we've looked at rural locations and the biodiversity and wildflowers we can see there. In this episode, I wanted to look at urban locations because many people won't be able to get to uh, rural locations that much or that easily, but yet right outside your doorstep, in this case within five meters of my own doorstep, there's an abundance of wildflowers if only you just took the time and the patience to have a good strong look at them. The first flower I'd like to talk about is this. This is called purple toad flax, Linaria purpurea. The reason it's called toad flax is the flower was meant to look like the face of a toad. I don't think it is, but some people do. And it was once a very common plant in the Mediterranean and it gradually spread all over the world by gardeners and people bringing it places. Uh, it escaped and is growing wild in most city areas uh, and is now being used back again as a garden plant in its pink variety form, which is called Cannon West. Both of these just invaded my garden accidentally. I don't know how they got here, but they are incredibly useful for bees. They really are very favored by a lot of different types of bees that push down the petals and uh, to reach into the nectar at the bottom of the, uh, the flower. This plant will be familiar to many people. It is ragwort, uh, Jacobia vulgaris. It is illegal, in fact, in many places. There is uh, laws against it because it is deemed to be poisonous to cattle and horses. Um, however, whilst humans hate it, it is very, very, very much loved by a great variety of insects, specifically bees, hoverflies, and butterflies. So these little guys are the caterpillars of the cinnabar moth. And they extract poisons from the ragwort. And when the bird, they turn into moths, they're bright red and black, indicating that they're dangerous and nothing eats them. And rightly so, because they taste awful. So this magnificent weed is called teasel. And it is commonly found in waste ground, as we are here, but um, and in urban areas. Uh, it is a very, very sharp plant, so don't go grabbing it. And the benefit it had is that it was once used, the, he the dried heads, to tease wool, hence the name teasel. And its seeds are absolutely adored by goldfinches and other birds in the wintertime. Here it is in flower, and soon its dried heads will start to, ap to appear. Ouch. This plant is from the daisy family, as you can probably recognize immediately. It is called Mexican fleabane. It is a new arrival in Ireland, uh, as are many of our urban plants. It favors dry areas, which is why it loves uh, the urban areas, because it can grow in walls. The Irish word is called nonin bala, the daisy of the wall or wall daisy. And it originated in central uh, and south of northern North America. Um, but it was found originally, uh, spotted originally in the ruins of the uh, football stadia from the World Cup in Mexico. This flower is called Rose Bay Willow Herb. It is a flower of recently disturbed uh, locations, in this case when I was digging the garden in spring. Uh, the seeds of this flower can last very long in the soil, and so whenever there's a disturbance, they sprout back. So in places like North America, where it is grown, where you find it in great abundance, it's after a fire, so it's commonly called fireweed. In order for it not to uh, self-pollinate, in order to ensure it cross-pollinates, the flowers emerge at different rates and at different times. So here we are the, at the male stage, and here we are at the female stage. These are parts that are already fertilized and will become seeds. And up here, we see flowers that are yet to come. This means that bees and pollinators go between the plants at different times when it's ready to pollinate so that it doesn't pollinate itself with its own uh, seed, uh, pollen. And uh, it is a plant that has incredible, uh, it, it's all edible, everything part is edible, although I'm not sure it tastes very nice. 
and it was used extensively for herbal remedies in the past.